Greetings, it's Maxo Diddley, and today I am going to be showing you how you can do an open world system in Unity. So let's get right into it. Firstly, why do you want to do an open world system? Well basically, when you have a really big world, it's not advisable to have the entire world loaded in at once. So, if we implement some kind of system to only load what's near the player, because in most cases that's all you're going to need, we can reduce the update calls because we have less update functions being called, and we can lower the memory usage because active objects use a lot more memory than deactivated objects. And when the player moves, or every second or whatever, we can check where the player is and then deactivate objects that are too far away and activate objects that are close to the player. I have divided my world into chunks, where basically I have a parent game object called chunk, and I've also happened to make it for ground, but it can literally be an empty object, and then inside you have everything that should belong in the chunk. The reason being we're going to be using chunks is because we're going to be checking the player's position and comparing it to every single chunk. So it's better to use chunks than to check the player's distance to every single object because that way we're going to be doing less checks which is better for performance. And inside each chunk I have got a tree. Again, these are just simple cubes. We also have player movement code. However, this player movement code does not matter at all. It can literally be anything. We're not going to be touching this script but it's here in case you are slightly curious. Let's get into making the open world system. So we're going to create a script. So right click in your assets folder, go to create, go to C sharp script, call it chunk handler, then open it up in Visual Studio. At the top of the class, we're going to do four variables. We're going to do serialize field game object player, Serialize field game object array chunk parents, serialize field float activation distance, and serialize field float check interval equals 1f. Okay, what's going on here? So we're going to need a reference to the player because we need to get the player's distance whenever we do a chunk update. So we need an array to store all of the chunks that are going to be part of the world we want in our open world system. Then we're going to do a float activation distance. Think of this like a Minecraft render distance. Basically, the higher the number, the more chunks we're going to have loaded in at one time. And check interval. How frequently are we going to check where the player is positioned relative to all the other chunks so we can activate and deactivate chunks that are too close and too far to the player? You can change this. The more frequent this is, so the lower the number, the more performance heavy the game is going to be. You could also modify this code to make it so it only checks when the player moves, which might be better for certain games. In our start function, we're just going to do start coroutine, check chunk distance. And the reason why we're going to be using the coroutine is, is because we can tell the coroutine, execute this code once every second, which is basically going to be our check interval, which is how often are we going to check in seconds. So we can delete our update function and we can do iNumerator check chunk distance. So this is going to be the code that's going to execute every second in our case to update which chunks we want to have active and inactive. We are then going to do a while true, which is going to create an infinite loop. The entire time the game is open and running, we want to be checking chunks. After that, we're going to do a for each loop. We're going to do for each game object chunk parent in chunk parents. So we're going to be doing a for each loop so we can loop through every single chunk parent in our chunk parents array. Then we're going to do a long line of code. We're going to do float distance to player equals vector 3.distance player.transform.position and chunk parents.transform.position. So for the current chunk parent we're looking at, we're going to see how far away the player is from the chunk parent, and we're going to store that in a float. After that, we are going to do a simple if statement. We're going to do if distance to player is less than or equal to activation distance, chunk parents.set to active true. So if the player is close enough to the chunk, we're going to activate it because 
It's close to the player, so it needs to be active, so it can do stuff and we can enjoy the game. However, we do an else statement, chunk parent dot set active false. This means if the chunk isn't close enough to the player, we're going to deactivate it because it's too far away. We don't care about it. After the for each loop, we're going to do yield return new wait for seconds check interval. So after we've done one round of updating for chunks, we're going to wait on this line of code for exactly how many seconds our check interval is. So in our case, it's going to be one second. After the time has passed, we're going to go to the top of this while loop and then execute the for each loop again, doing another chunk update check. And then we're going to wait again and do it again. And this is going to occur until we stop playing the game. Also, make sure you have enough curly brackets. I deleted one by accident, so make sure you have enough curly brackets for your class. But that is all of the code we need to do our chunk checking. So we're going to save our code. So we're going to head back into Unity now and we're going to click on our player object and we're going to drag and drop our chunk handler into our player object. And then for the player field, we're going to drag and drop the, the player onto it. For activation distance, we'll keep it to 50. Check interval, we'll keep it to one. So now we have an array here and we need to put all of the chunks or all of the objects you want to be part of our open world system into here. So a little way we can do this quickly is we're going to click on this little lock here. This means regardless of what object we have selected, we can we will still see the player in the inspector. I have put all of my chunks in a little object here. So what we can do is I can click on the top chunk. I'm going to scroll down to the bottom chunk and shift click it. This means every single object in between the first object I clicked and the object I shift clicked will be selected. I can then simply drag and drop onto chunk parents and it will populate the array with every chunk. I've also noticed I have misspelt chunk for the object name. Then you can just click anywhere to deselect them. With all of that, save your work and hit play. And as you can see, Chunks are loading and unloading. This is pretty cool. Now, we're going to hit escape and then hit play. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag the game out to another window and we're going to look at what's happening in the scene view as opposed to the game view while we play the game. So, I'm not sure if you can tell, but essentially every second we're checking which chunks we need to load and unload. And as you can see, I think this looks quite cool. And as you can see, we've hit the edge of the world here. Um, so we're going to go back. And chunks are loading and unloading because, well, some are too far away from the player. And this is a really simple system. Again, you can do it so it occurs when the player moves as opposed to every second. It all depends on what you want. But... Thanks for being a great audience, be sure to leave a like in the comment if you enjoyed and subscribe because I will be showing you even more cooler, sophisticated and complicated ways you can go about doing this. But I thought I'd start with chunks because it's simple. So thanks for watching.